Um, yeah, I think this is the bottom of the call. Ace-9 is definitely a sevens of folds. I think Ace-8 is a call because sometimes we have 0.03% equity against Ace-8 with a worse flush draw dominated. Where were the clubs? That's all we wanted. Wrecked. Uh, should we try one of our... No, we're not going to try one of our clever, uh, fancy, fancy plays, but yeah. So a different board we can size up on. Maybe even three quarters is an option, to be honest. We'd have to think a lot about like what would be our bluffs. I think here we'd probably take maybe a hand like... An ace five with the ace of clubs or something, and we might go three quarters uh, with a hand like that, or an ace eight. When we get called, we have to be a lot more careful on this club, especially because flush draws are obviously not folding from our opponents, and normally that's okay. You're not like terrified of flushes, but when we go size up, it means there's an awful lot less jack x or even nine x. So I think we will check on this one back. Well. I mean, I think it's a pretty easy check on the river. Hope we win against Jack 8, Jack 10, King Jack, King 9, 9, 10. And it's a pretty easy fold if we get paid into. Mm. We have a way to do the hand in bluff. It makes no sense. We still beat have some showdown. We have loads of better hands. Uh, we have some value. And then, uh, I mean, I think, yeah, we're just whatever our unpaired non-club would be that we get here with. 10, 9, okay. Uh, Queen 10 off would be your guess. Isaac, I've just demonstrated how to play Queen 10 off very profitably. Can you not see that? You didn't see that? How, how profitable that was? Good timing. So, he says, if uh, Isaac says, if you get dealt the same hand every game in, in spins, opponents don't know and play normal, what do you think would be the worst hand you'd break even with? I think Queen-10, you would have a nice profit with Queen-10. It's a good question. Um, yeah, I think heads up, you'd be pretty happy, especially in ultras. Like, you'd love to get Queen-10 every hand when you're like six big blinds effective heads up, you know? It would be like, hey, Queen-10 again, let's go. But I think, um, yeah, I think maybe a hand like Jack six suited. If if we if we're just talking three hand, let's say we're just talking three handed at fifteen big blinds, then yeah, you might be at like king eight off. That makes sense. Spore till it's time. Here for the money, baby. Here for the money. And the money's what we're bringing when we win Queens against Jack 10. Can we hold? Can we hold? Yes, we can. Queen 10 is nuts, says. Fuck Queen 10. Queen 10 is the garbage shit. I hate the hand so much. <laughs> Our Karuto correctly pointing out. The username doesn't seem to check. You know, we've dedicated an entire Twitch account to Queen 10 is the nuts. How do you like these nuts with the Queen 10? And then it's gone fucking shit hand, isn't it? Garbage. <laughs> a, apparently, there's a, apparently there's a whole psychosexual thing happening with the Queen 10 from Queen 10 is nuts. Muzeva, thank you very much for the follow. We're going to have a little bit here. Uh, if we get check raise, we'll just jam. I think over the top we have enough equity to, yeah. I mean, whatever. Like, if he's got, I mean, I think very often people just have value here, and they may not have bluffs. But let's hope Food of Gold is a guy that would have a bluff here, and not just turn up with jacks. But if he has got jacks, we've still got a pretty good equity. Hey, Food of God, is a, I rate the fact that you had a check raise fold there. Solid, solid, solid. By the way, really, really impressed. Genuinely, like, I think it's a spot where everybody just has value all the time. Um, now, unfortunately for him, we had a hand that was just like, GG, but uh, we'll take it. Shout out to A6, pretty standard, blind me blunt. Shout out to A5, pretty standard. These are all way too good. These are all way better than Queen 10 off, just like to point out. Sure 5 lan. Sure 5 lan. Sure 5 lan. 
I'm playing three dollar flash spins on GG, winning in chips heads up, but breaking through A. Is there more edge in heads up with three way? Also, any tips for three way? Uh, so you will mostly in spins. It's the ceiling for heads up is higher than the ceiling for three handed. Um, three handed, you're a bit more. More of your decisions are pre flop than post flop. So when you play on the button, for example, um, you obviously do, like min raise approximately 35, 40 percent of your hands depending on stack depths. And then when you're about 10 big blinds, you're just shoving a lot. At 10 big blinds heads up, though, you still have a lot of limps. So like at 12 big blinds, I think you're limping 73% or something. And then a lot of post-op decisions. So playing, um, yeah, post-op decisions will allow for a greater EV difference uh, in that. So definitely there's a high ceiling in terms of what you can achieve heads up in the 300. In terms of tips for three-way, I would say make sure your preflop ranges are on point. Um, I would say... Um, yeah, you can divide it into sort of 300 on the button, and then you can say small blind versus button. Uh, let's say we're the button, small blind versus button, big blind versus button, and then small blind versus big blind, and big blind versus small blind. So you've got like sort of five distinct 300 points to work on. And then from that, I would say uh, each of those can have their own unique challenges, and your everybody's natural game will probably naturally your kind of default background game will naturally favor one particular part of 300 so for a lot of people it's like well they're quite good on the button if they come from i don't know uh, uh a heads up background they're pretty good at betting and barreling and like knowing what to do we're gonna bet this i think it's strong enough to bet we could also check as well but we'll go for a bet love the turn definitely bet the turn uh, i think we'll go 2.5 could go bigger as well, but... Um, so yeah, if you have a buddy, uh, I would say the best advice, Chef Five Lam, is try and find a buddy that plays the same games as you, and then compare your win rates in each of those five spots. So the button, small versus button, don't worry too much about small versus button, but make sure you shove them wide enough um, correctly. Big blind versus button, lots of things to think about there. Cool people, uh, cool people two bear. Make sure you're defending the right range. Make sure you're not overcalling versus C bets. Make sure your check raises enough, etc., etc. And then small blind versus big blind. Make sure your V pips wide enough. Make sure you're not over C betting or under C betting. Big blind versus small blind. Think about your ISO frequency. Think about your C bet and ISO pots. Think about your defending versus C bets as well. And then all of those in every spot three hundred. Think about your core river efficiency. To name just but a few things to look at. <laughs> but uh, hopefully one of those things will be helpful. So, it's a pretty, cl not close, I think it's the fold, but like, it's a pretty deceptive ball, really like, ah, I could do something, I've got back doors, I've got a back door flush draw, etc, etc, but heads up, we wouldn't really be folding this, I don't think, but I think uh, versus the big blind versus button, we should be folding this, it's my suggestion. It's just the relative strength of the hand diminishes a lot. Nine and a half flushes are not so good against uh, a button, as they are heads up, much stronger relative hand. As is, I hope you've been, I hope you have, or I think I'm making a halftime show out of Phil Hellman's recent heads up match. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, there's lots of halftime ideas in, in, in production and none of them have been created, which is a problem because um, I haven't actually got anything new for this week. I'm so sorry, guys. I've been super busy. But um, I was gonna do some, I was gonna add some idea about doing some sort of frog licking thing with all the, you know, what do you call it? All of the Brin. I was like, let's get some frog licking in. Make, but then I ran out of time, and then yeah, the Helmuth match for sure. Uh, I had lots of ideas about that as well. They're all in the works. They're all in the works. But apologies for nothing new today, ladies and gentlemen. I know I've let you down. I let the team down. I let myself down. I let everyone down. But we've got no. Nothing new. It's terrible, isn't it? Terrible. Uh, Alright, we get a min raise. We're going to call Queen for Sued. Cool says, What's up, Tom? I've been playing ultras on my own bankroll for the last five months. Very brave. This month is the first month with crazy chip view difference. Do people play by ultras on their own? Or are most in the EV pools? I would... I mean, at the hundreds, I say... I don't know of anyone professionally grinding ultras on their own without some form of insurance. So EV pools, EV deals, whatever. Uh, I would recommend people to... <laughs> To go for one of those options because yeah it's a tough grind uh 
Hey, we just lose the King 10 all the time. I might try a little block bet here. Just trying to target a hand like Queen Jack, Queen 10, King Jack, whatever. King Queen. I'm hoping that would fold because uh, I think I would bet every value hand uh, that I have there. I guess in the minerals pot we don't have that much in terms of um, we don't have that many pairs. But if we do have a pair, we'd bet that sizing, to be honest, to try and get value from that. So if we had a pair, great value bet. And you know, we have Queen 4, so we could have Queen 3. Makes sense in my head. <laughs> but sometimes you get called and you're like, well, that didn't really work. Yeah. Something I quite like doing is from time to time, like, really really focus in on pre-flop so really like take your time and just really think through everything i think it's good sometimes to like play poker with a little bit more instinctual play so let's start with a call here this feels bluffy to me i don't know why snap check now he did min raise and snap check in queen on the 883 so we'll start with a check here we've got Back to straight draw, back to flush draw, two overs, which one we can hit, of course. Quick check again. Now, Food of Gods did check raise in another spot. I guess we'll just go for some value now. Could be up against sevens or something. That would make sense, maybe. So we'll go for a half pot here. Could, up be, could be up against aces. Now, he could have sixes. That would be pretty sick. Does he call sevens, do you think? We have 9-10, we have Jack-9, we have 10-9, we don't have now 9-7, we don't have 6-7. We're definitely jamming, I'm just worried a bit about 6s, or maybe pocket 8s or something like that. He's played very tricky. Okay. No snaps good. I'm very pessimistic as a poker player, I'll be honest. But sometimes with good reason. <laughs> I want to shove the queen seven. I wonder what the hand was. Called a delay. N no. Called a probe. I said pre check. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, cool. I would say uh, most people. I mean, at the lowest stakes, there are definitely more guys. I think playing on their own bankroll. I think at the high stakes, uh, not many that I know of. I also would say it's, in my opinion, not. I would really suggest that it's it's just plus EV to get some form of insurance. So. The amount that you give up, I think, is more than compensated for the lower stress life you have, and it's easy to play higher volume and all these sort of things um, when you have all that. We'll call the eights here. Good result for us. Again, we're running good pre, for sure. We didn't really do much in these hands in terms of decision-making. Good shot by 8-5. We call eights, swap the hands, 0 V difference, and so it's always important to remember not to get too excited when, like, if you look at your graph after a run good pre-flop day, you're like, oh, I'm a genius. Nah. You're not a genius, but then you're also not an idiot if you have a bad run. So whatever. If he shoves Queen Jack here, we're sad. If he shoves Queen Nine here, we're happy. Shoves Eight Nine, we're happy. But again, we did we did nothing to, to really earn these chips. McFire says, "Hi Tomo, you're the best. Good luck, good luck." McFire is on fire. As uh, as we just uh, won, how much did we win? Two and a half. Yeah, thousand dollar. That's nice, isn't it? 